What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So we have some very interesting news and I want to specifically talk about social security and the fact that we are having projections already that the social security cost of living adjustment for 2023 is currently projected to be at 7.6%. That's a 7.6% increase on top of the 5.9% that you got for 2022. It's a lot of big adjustments. Now, just so you can, let's try to wrap this whole thing up because what we know at this time is the cost of living adjustment. This is going off of inflation, okay? And the cost of living adjustment that we saw in 2022 was at 5.9% because of the inflation that we saw back in 2021. Now, that was a very large increase in itself. And compared to the previous year when we pretty much saw nothing, this was big. But in reality, inflation has turned that 5.9% cost of living adjustment into a loss. Because one of the things I hear constantly on this channel is I did get the 5.9% cost of living adjustment, but I also got my SNAP benefits reduced. I got other things reduced. I have to pay more for Medicare, right? Lots of big changes. Now, currently, we have inflation sitting at 7.9%, okay? The reason why this is so important, back in October of 2021, I believe inflation was at 6.2%, okay? So quite a bit down from where we are right now. Well, the cost of living adjustment for 2023 based off of where we are currently at, it's already sitting at 3.9%, okay? Already at 3.9%, that's just 2% off of what we saw for 2022. Now, the projected cost of living adjustment for 2023, which let me remind you, this will not come out officially until October of 2022. The projection is 7.6%, okay? 7.6%, that's pretty good. Okay, that's pretty. That's a pretty good increase, but and again, it's a, it's, a, it's a substantial jump from what we are currently seeing at 3.9 percent. But this also comes with other things that you have to worry about because if you get more money, you also lose benefits. Now, even though a lot of people were very excited about this news of a 7.6 percent cost of living adjustment number. This is not all that it's made out to be. According to the, the Senior Citizens League, they say that the average social security benefit is currently around $1,564 per month. Not bad. But in order to keep up with the 8.6% year over year CPI-W reading for February, again, this is the reading that, that we use for the cost of living adjustment, which it's it heavily favors certain things, entertainment, right? Things that many seniors don't care about, but it actually uh, doesn't weigh heavily enough on things like healthcare, right? So it's a little, there's some issues with this, but according to the Senior Citizens League, they say in order to keep up with the 8.6% year over year CPI-W reading for February, this benefit should be closer to $1,698, not $1,564 per month. That's a difference of $134 a month. That's pretty substantial. $134 when you are seeing decreases in SNAP benefits, when you're seeing increases in healthcare costs. That's substantial. To a lot of people, that's all they have left at the end of the month is $100. $150, it's very little, especially to live off for an entire month. But we also know that according to the Senior Citizens League, Social Security has lost roughly 30% of its buying power just since 2000, okay? And these are real issues. And I, and I really wanted to bring this up because this projected cost of living adjustment right now, this has a lot of people wondering what should they do for the future? How do we plan for the future? What could we expect in the future? So again, 
I, and I know this is just a projection, but let's say we run with this projection or we, we pretty much take what we got this year of, of 5.9% and what the projection is at 7.6 and we find the middle, right? We find the middle and figure out how can we live like this? So something I want you to keep in mind is, and again, this is, may, maybe you don't care about this, but you should, is that the Federal Reserve at this moment is currently raising interest rates. And the Federal Reserve just this week alone raised rates by 0.25%. The expectation is the Federal Reserve is going to continue to raise rates at, at a rate of 0.25% for their next seven meetings. This will take them into the end of the year and bring them between 1.75 and 1.9% by the end of this year. Their goal is to be at 1.9%, all right? Now, here's the reason I bring this up. The reason why this is important is because when you raise interest rates, it will slow down the economy and it will cause uh, disinflation. Okay, so we won't see inflation keep going. It will you know, level off and start to fall back down. We won't see deflation, but we will see disinflation. And the lower inflation goes and the way it is set around October, that is going to mean a smaller cost of living adjustment for you. Okay, which to many people, a smaller cost of living adjustment, as long as inflation is down, as long as no more SNAP benefits get pulled away, as long as no more, you know, you don't got to pay anything more for your health care, that's a win-win. But when when prices keep going up, and, and, and I'm going to give you a, a this would be a, a good scenario, but when prices keep going up, usually people on fixed incomes get hurt because you're locked in at a certain cost of living adjustment at the beginning of the year, but rates and prices keep going up. That's a huge issue because if as long as everything keeps going up and you're locked in, well, you're kind of missing out on a lot of that, right? But this would be your best case scenario. And again, this isn't this isn't this wouldn't be great, but this would be the best case scenario if we were already in October, is if we saw fairly high inflation in October, but then you know come December and January, February, we see it come down. I'm just leaving November out of it because you know who really cares. But what if we see high inflation in October and then you got you know November, Jan or December, January, February, March, and it starts plummeting, we see inflation just drop, right? That would be really good because you'd be locked in with a higher cost of living adjustment, but they're not gonna take that money away. Just because inflation's dropping and prices are becoming cheaper, that's okay. You would have that money. You'd have it locked in. So that would be the, the best case scenario. But again, we're in March. We got to get to October 1st. Okay. Not just October 1st, but we got to get to October anyway. And again, we're months away. But keep in mind that the way the cost of living adjustment is calculated is based off of the, the I believe it's the third quarter of this calendar year compared to the third quarter of the previous year, okay? So right now, just understand that we have no idea where inflation is headed. We know where it currently is, or technically off of last month, but we know where that is, 7.9%, okay? So just make sure you stay up to date on what inflation is at, what the projections for the social security cost of living adjustment are, right? If there's any increases that we could potentially see, um, that you are you would have to pay for okay let's let's keep an eye on those things okay because these are things that are extremely important to uh, really the future all right and if you have questions on any of the stuff you can always comment down in the comment section below let me know what your questions are and I'll try to get to them as quickly as possible but just understand this would be huge a 7.6 percent cost of living adjustment would be insane okay but the issue there is that also means we see, inflation skyrocket as well. All right. So it's either kind of a win-win or a lose-lose situation at this point. But as always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on and share all latest news and updates. Just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.